Hey, this story is just one part of the Stories with Sapphire podcast. If you want to hear the full episode in its intended context, the link is in the description below. It's story time. Chapter 1. I Don't Want to Go with Grandpa. Submitted by Anonymous. This is a story from before I was born that my mother had told me when I was younger. This had happened to my hypersensitive aunt who was now in her late 40s and my grandfather who was still thriving. I'll be sharing this from the point of view of my grandfather who used to be a priest in New Jersey. Names have been changed for privacy. It was 1987. My first daughter, Debbie, just had her 10th birthday. A few months later, my father had passed, three weeks before Ava's, my second daughter's, birthday. She was turning seven and had a very close relationship with her grandfather. So, although we celebrated her birthday just as planned, it was a slightly somber event. The funeral was a few days later. The week after, Ava woke up in the middle of the night and ran to our bedroom, visibly shaken and upset. I asked her what was wrong, and she said that Grandpa was in her room. That took me a bit by surprise, of course, but I put on a strong, straight face and said, there's nothing to be afraid of. It's just Grandpa. She shook her head and said that she was scared because he had told her to leave with him. I didn't know what that was supposed to mean. But she was a little girl who was grieving her grandfather and nothing more. I told her that she had nothing to worry about and to go back to bed and just think happy thoughts. She didn't budge and ended up staying in our bedroom. Ava continued to sleep in our bed for the next month. At first, I was much more forgiving because I knew that she had been through a lot. We all had. But it got to a point where I needed her to stop this nonsense. I told her she was going to stay alone in her room and nothing would happen and that was the end of it. Look, I didn't enjoy hearing her cry herself to sleep, but I was doing what I thought was right. Ava had been sleeping by herself for about a week. I thought everything was back to normal, but she had gotten severely sick. My wife and I took both our daughters to the hospital to figure out why Ava had looked so pale and weak. The doctor told us it was pneumonia. They gave us medicine and said she would get well soon since she was a healthy little girl. After we got home, I talked with my older brother on the phone and told him about Ava's sickness and what she said about her grandfather. He laughed at me. Why didn't you believe her? You're a priest. You've experienced things like this and much worse. It's not that I didn't believe her, I said defensively. I didn't believe that her grandfather that loved her would haunt her and scare her like that. He always said he wanted what was best for her. The following day, Ava was in excruciating pain. She said she felt tearing in her stomach. I rushed her to the hospital. The doctor said they would have to x-ray her to see if there was anything inside her stomach since they couldn't find anything externally. The doctor guessed she could be starting to get cramps at an early age and gave me pain pills and instructed me to give it to her that night. That night was the first time we didn't hear her crying before bed. We figured the medication was working, but I decided I still wanted to check in on her and make sure she was okay. I went to my daughter's bedroom, but when I opened the door... Debbie ran out of the room with tears streaming down her face and had a raspy voice as if she'd been screaming for days. I went into the room and saw Ava on the bed. She looked like a corpse. Her eyes were puffy and red, her golden skin now pale. She had looked as if she hadn't eaten when she was just having dinner with us a few hours ago. I picked her up and drove straight to the church. I sat her in my office chair in the middle of my room, clearing everything else out of the way. I watched as Ava groaned and cried. A couple of hours later, that's when I heard it. 
Ava finally spoke. Leave me alone, Grandpa. I'm not going anywhere with you. You're scaring me. She kept telling my deceased father to get away from her because he wasn't acting himself. I held up my cross and a bucket of holy water and begged my father to leave Ava alone and that I would banish his soul to hell if he wouldn't stop bothering her. I chanted and yelled at my father for the rest of the night. When I brought her back home, I watched Ava sleep until the morning, not getting any sleep myself. When the sun came up, I brought her to the doctor to see what they would say. They said her temperature was rising very quickly and she would get better soon. Glad to see the medicine worked, they said. I smiled politely. A few weeks later, Ava was back to her usual self with her flowing hair and her golden skin. She had never quite acted the same after that incident. But we still cherish every moment we have with her because we had gotten her back and that's all that mattered. As a child, I used to get the stomach bug often. And I know that as a child, I was very sensitive. Everyone tells me that I would cry all the time. And so when I got to the age where I could actually remember like what my human experience was like, I was very quiet and shy and reserved because I was trying to hold back all the emotions. And so keeping myself from processing everything, because emotions are how we release. It's just a form of releasing energy. So as I was holding myself back, that's why I was having so many stomach issues because I wasn't letting myself digest and process what I was going through. I have also had a history of stomach issues, but since starting therapy, I've felt so much better. My therapist actually helped me realize the role that keeping secrets played in my family and that secrets meant holding the power. I think holding so many secrets inside of myself for years is what contributed to my digestive problems. Similarly, Ava's illness and stomach pain might have been due to the disconnect between what she was experiencing with her grandpa and how her parents were treating the situation. Once her dad truly acknowledged the presence of her grandpa's spirit, that's when she got better. Sometimes, that's all people really need is to feel heard and validated. Thank you for joining me today. If you like what you heard and would like to support this independently run show, consider becoming a member of my Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash stories with Sapphire to see the different tiers and perks. If you'd like to submit a story, email me at storieswithsapphire at gmail.com. Salamat and good night. Mm-hmm.